Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy, the Gaming Trish here. Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. I actually never really played or beaten this before on any sort of platform, so I decided that I'm going to be playing it on my Nintendo Switch, and I'll tell you guys about it when I'm done. The following Thursday. Uh, Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. Maybe pass out outside. What even am I? Mario Kart is one of Nintendo's best-selling video games ever made, and every generation of video game console, there's basically a Mario Kart to go alongside of it. And as of late, the last Mario Kart game to be released was 5 years ago, and that was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and at the time of this recording, there's even more copies being sold. This is crazy! I have played Mario Kart all my life, it was one of the first video game experiences I had next to Smash Brothers, and you know what, I'm going to be playing every single Mario Kart game for you today. Let's get started. With the success of F-Zero, another racing game made by Nintendo, Nintendo wanted to keep on making more racing games, but incorporate multiplayer into them because that was one of the faults of F-Zero thanks to the Mode 7. So they came back with Mario behind a go-kart and driving around a little bit of a slower track design than F-Zero, which actually this works out really well in the long run. Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo launched on August 27th, 1992 here in America and was one of, if not the best video games on the Super Nintendo. People will still tell you to this day that this game still holds up. Well, let's see if that's still true. That title is just so nostalgic. Super Mario Kart starts us off on one player and 50cc and wow look at this character selection. Wait, is that Bowser the main bad guy of Mario Kart? That's so crazy I can play with him on a go-kart. Koopa Troopa? Okay that kind of makes sense. Some ape in a tank top? Is this supposed to be Donkey Kong? Out of the 8 characters in this, 3 were never actually playable until this very game, which is actually very crazy to me, so I actually kinda dig this lineup of characters. Alright, this is Mario Kart. First and foremost, driving. You just hold down B to drive, which, oh my gosh, on an anything besides the Super Nintendo controller, this feels so weird. I mean, honestly, every other Mario Kart game uses the A button to accelerate, with this being B. I guess technically, B was technically how A was working back in the Super Nintendo days. The heck am I even talking about? Now it's time to fire off the items that you need in order to reach first place. Got the red shell, which basically homes in on your opponent. The green shell, which just hits what's in front of you. Mushrooms to make you go fast. Bananas to trip over your opponent. A heckin' lightning bolt to shrink your enemies. Yes, I know what I said. The feather item that makes you jump. Yes, I know what I said. Ooh, the ghost that can steal items. And finally, the star, which makes you turn invisible and turns you into a living, bleeding skittle. Whew, that's a lot of items. The level designers kind of all over the place. Those levels that I do like, but honestly, I kind of forgot about a lot of these tracks. They're all basically just boxes that you waste across. Oh yeah, and this level is the pits. I just don't like this level at all. Okay, let's get into the big reason why I don't think this game has aged very well, and that is the controls. Basically, everything just with the D-pad just feels so weird, and also the stiff turns that the characters have, the easy to fall off level tracks and some of the layer courses, and the items that the AI throws. Those items that are not even in the game's code for you to pick up, so whenever you want to cross them, you will never be able to get the items, which means that they could do stuff like shrink you and make you slower and these stages just goes on and on and on with no end in sight because it's five laps instead of the normal three which every other game just makes it three laps for every course this is kind of hot garbage because it feels like the levels never end after unlocking every track, including Rainbow Road, I think I safely say that I've beaten Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> After 
after battling through thick and thin and me finally showing back up here, I've realized one thing. Super Mario Kart is not a bad game. It has age and there is a lot of level bad AI. But to say that this is not a fun, archaic experience is actually kind of a false statement because it is. It's really fun. It's fun to play with your friends and your family. There's even a battle mode in this game that I didn't really cover that much in this video, mostly because I am by myself and so I just always focus on the single player aspects of Mario Kart. But definitely multiplayer as well, Mario Kart shines the brightest and I feel like this game definitely showcases. But for the next game in the marathon, we are going to be taking a look at Super Mario Kart 64. Wait. Huh. It just says Mario Kart. There's no Super in the title. Yo, what's going on guys? Thank you guys so very much for making it to the end of this video. Basically what I wanted to do for the end of this video and for the end of some of my videos coming up here in the future, I want to shout out a lot of people that I've been watching as of late. First and foremost, The Internal Samurai. If you guys don't know, The Internal Samurai is a YouTuber who is a Mobian who basically makes inspirational videos based around games like Sonic the Hedgehog. He also does Let's Plays as well as live streams as his VTuber model. If you guys want to give him support, please go and follow him. I'll leave his link down below so you guys can go and check him out. His content is really well made and really well produced and I highly recommend giving him so much love. Anyway, thank you guys so very much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night or day and keep gaming. <laughs>